the Sweet Life Travel Podcast had so much fun sharing with Lupkin Travel in Atlanta, Georgia, just recently. And so many of you might have missed it. And so, just for you, we have presented, we have prepared and presented that entire podcast right here on the Sweet Life Travel Podcast just for you. We're talking Jamaica, guys, and we're sharing with a very amazing agent, owner of an amazing agency right there in Atlanta, Georgia. And, you know, we're all a family in this industry. We share together, we build together, we grow together. Sit back, relax, and enjoy as we talk all things Jamaica. Hello, and welcome to Let's Talk Travel with your host, Johnny Lumpkin, owner of Lumpkin Travel, a premier travel agency. Want to get away from your daily grind, plan a romantic trip with that special someone, or indulge in experiences that will leave a lifetime of memories? Then come on in, have a seat, and let's talk travel. Hello, hello, hello. Thank you for joining us for another episode of Let's Talk Travel with Johnny Lumpkin, your travel agent for life. Tonight we're going to talk about Jamaica. Yes, Jamaica. Beautiful island. So much information to share, and I am excited to share it with you. We're going to take a brief moment for a couple of sponsors, and then we're going to dive right in to talking about Jamaica. We'll be right back. Joining me over the phone is my good friend, Sharon Sheriff White. She is um, owner of Sherry's Fantastic Travels and Resorts Limited, and also um, the host of the Sweet Life Travel Podcast. Um, Sharon is based out of Ocho Rios, Jamaica, and I just want to welcome her. How are you doing today, Sharon? I am I'm good. You are my first guest on the Let's Talk Travel podcast. Thank you so much. Uh-huh. I'm so glad that you're here. It's oh. it's good to talk to you again. Good to hear from you. And I really wanted to get you on because this episode I wanted to talk about resorts and all inclusives. Um, but okay. I wanted to hear. I wanted my my my. My clients and my friends and my fans to hear from someone who is in the wonderful country of Jamaica. Um, I've been there. I love it. I can't wait to go back. And for someone who who's never been to Jamaica and is interested or thinking about going, tell us a little something about your your wonderful country. Oh my goodness! If you have never been to Jamaica, you've got to be in Jamaica. It is, you know, we have a tagline, the land of all right. And I like it because in Jamaica, things are really just good, very, very good. And I say it from the standpoint of being somebody who is actually very in love with my country. Hmm. You know, um, I'll start, I can start anywhere yes. from the, <laughs> from the beauty of the country from the the essence of the people the culinary delights it's just awe inspiring and persons who come to jamaica they find that there's a particular bug and we're not talking mosquitoes now <laughs> a, a particular bug that tends to bite you and it leaves you wanting for more your stay is never long enough 
your experience is always too short and you want to go back again and experience it. But I would suggest to the person who has never come to Jamaica, doesn't know what to expect, come with an open mind. Come to expect a Caribbean island, you know, depending on the time of the year, you will get a varied weather pattern. But one thing will be consistent is the friendliness of the people, the hospitality that you will receive, the smells that are spontaneous, and the food that is to die for. <laughs> that is amazing. And I could attest to all of that <laughs> just in the in the time that I was there. Um, what is the best time to visit Jamaica? Um, it varies. For those who are looking on price, if you are price sensitive, you want to make the most of the dollar and, and get as many days out of it, you want to perhaps come in October. Um, September, sometime after President's Week, there's a lull all the way up to about mid-October. That's a good time. And if you were looking at post-winter, I would probably say there's a little shoulder time between the ending of April to maybe the middle of May. So that's price-wise. That's when you'll get the best prices. If you want to come for festivals, events, then you want to check the calendar because we have all year round, music festivals, culinary festivals, you name it. So if you're coming in the winter time, most persons would probably be coming because you want to escape the harsh North American weather, depending on where you are. But then there are certain activities. For example, Christmas in Jamaica is really, really special. Mm -hmm. And I find that a lot of my groups, they tend to come for Christmas because it's a good time to get the family away together. And it's just so memorable. It's, it's warm. It's, it's rich. It's, it gives you a vibe like you don't really get anywhere, even though you might be, for example, in an all-inclusive. The staff tend to pull you in, and there's a, a, a sense of family. But pretty much Jamaica is a year-round destination. You just basically have to decide what's good for your pocket because winter is the high season when prices are at their peak. And then, of course, summer is a busy time when everybody is out with the children. Mm -hmm. But the beauty, too, is that um, with a good offering of resorts, not only all-inclusives, but also standalone mama-papa-type establishments, you can basically cut your, your vacation as you like it. And that's where we come in and we shine in that, eh, Johnny? Yes, we, we do. We set it up so <laughs> that they just get exactly what suits their need and make it happen. I'm glad you mentioned about the mom and pops because when I was there, I had the opportunity to stay a couple of days at a EP hotel um, resort as well as mm -hmm. an all-inclusive. And I was so glad I got to experience both because... They had such different vibes at each place where when I went exactly. to the the small boutique, I I was able to really embrace the culture and get to interact with a lot of people. I, I was in the grill right on Seven Mile. I stayed at the Coco La Palma. Oh. And I remember um, one day going out on the beach and seeing a whole lot of people just kind of standing around. And I was like, what's what's going on? And. And all of a sudden, this boat pulls up, and these, these gentlemen come out with this huge basket full of fish. And everybody mm -hmm. was actually coming in to buy fish. And they all came in and had different bags and weighing them. And before I know it, all the fish was gone. I was, it was just a cool to experience that. And that's something you wouldn't experience glad, in an all-inclusive. Exactly. I'm glad you mentioned that, too, because you're going to be the first to hear. We are starting... Post-COVID, as soon as that is, what we call our, our um, local tripping. So that's my, my slogan. Okay. And what it does is 
it's going to take persons into Jamaican life. So this is an exclusive event that is being offered just by Sure Fantastic Travels and Resorts for all of our partner agencies all across North America and Europe. And what we do is when we receive your clients, we take them on a discovery to live like a local. Oh. So it might be taking you over to Port Antonio. We pick you up at the airport, we take you over to Port Antonio. It's all about tours and immersion. We take you up into the Blue Mountains for coffee and fur and rafting. Then over to Kingston for a catamaran party, boat sort of setup. It's wild. It is fabulous. And I have found, though, Johnny, that our clients, particularly those who have come to Jamaica time and time again, they are itching to experience Jamaica the way we live it. Yes. And so we're excited to bring this forward. And we're hoping that many people take advantage of it. Our groups will be small, and so we won't be able to host huge amounts of people at a time. And that keeps the intimacy of it. But of course, when we do this the way we do it, you, their agent, you look like a superstar. They will love you forever. And the memories that they will take home will be second to none. That is great. And I like the small intimacy, like you said, um, to be able to experience those things because not a lot of people can do that. I hear a lot of times folks love the all-inclusives, but sometimes you, you don't feel like you're in that country. You, you just feel like you're exactly. experiencing it. Exactly. And, and that is what sets us apart, you know, because being in the island and also being a part of a huge network of agents and agencies and suppliers, we can mix and match pretty much anything you want. As a matter of fact, you can have a wild idea and just put it out there and we can make it come together seamlessly. So, yeah, we're, we're very excited. We're very excited about that. You know, we know the all-inclusives are basically the signature of Jamaica, but there's so much more to see and do, believe me. That is wonderful. I'm going to put you on the spot when you say about just your wildest dreams. Can you give me an example of something that you've done for somebody that was really kind of raising the bar? Oh, my. Oh. Ah. And now I'm going to have to go deep down. I have done so many (laughs) delightful things, you know. Um, We do a lot of weddings. And one of the things that a lot of our clients find a little bit off-putting, particularly because Jamaicans live all across the world, and um, they tend to want to come home for their wedding. Many times, we have a mixed group. We have those who are coming from where they live, particularly if a Jamaican is married to a national of another country. And so you'll have the Jamaican contingent. You'll have those who live in Jamaica and those who are coming in for the event. And all-inclusives tend to not manage that very well. And so what we have done is take the wedding off property. Okay. And make it just as the clients like it. I remember there was this one couple that wanted a river wedding. And so we sourced out a private river just in St. Anne by the White River and decorated it, you know, with the lights and everything, but still keeping that very Caribbean vibe. Mm -hmm. And when the ceremony was happening for the photographs and the videos, you could see the river running in the background. The minister had to raise his voice a little bit because the sound of the water was beginning to drown him out, you know? Wow. And it was just cool. They were all barefooted and casual. And afterwards, when it was time to eat, then it was freshly caught lobster and fish and um Bames and festival, total Jamaican fair, right on mm. Riverside, drinking the red stripe beer and the Appleton rum and local music. It was fun. And this is what we like to do. This is what I like to say to my clients, stretch me. 
it's something that's really gonna make you say wow yes and so you know that that's what we do that's what we do we we take advantage of all the resources that are available on the island and we give it to you we package it and we wrap it and we put a nice bow on it and voila you are just pleasantly surprised oh that is great Let's let's talk a little bit about the the geography of of your of Jamaica. When people see Ocho Rios, uh, Negril, uh, Montego Bay, Kingston, um, what is it about each one that kind of sets apart, or what should they look for if they're looking for a particular thing to say? Okay, maybe Montego Bay is for me, or Negril's for me. You know, it's interesting you should say that because. When you look on the map, most persons think, oh, it's a little dot. You know, Jamaica is a small island, but believe you me, it's not as small as it appears. As a matter of fact, even when you see the size of the island, you would automatically believe, oh, in no time we'll be from one point to another. Not necessarily so. Um, For the topography, um, we have basically seaside level going around the island so we are more long than wide we're probably two and a half times the length that that we are of the width and so you can pretty much drive around the island it's about 16 17 hours drive if you were driving non-stop okay but that's if you went like from one end to the other but if you try to go from the north coast where Ocherius is over to the south coast where Kingston is or Mandeville, you're half you're having the mountain ranges to deal with right in the middle of cockpit country and all of that. It's a very mountainous country. And so the topography lends itself to the personality of the people and what you should expect. So in Otreus, Otreus used to be a, a sleepy fishing village. And what you find, it's a very migratory community. A lot of people have come into Utrius because they were pulled by tourism. Mm -hmm. And so you will find an old timer, like if you listen to my podcast, Old Time Jamaica, you'll find an old timer who will tell you about what Utrius used to be, what Jamaica used to be before tourism became uh, a very structured event, you know? Mm-hmm. But then if you don't find that old timer to have that chat with, then it's 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 really built up and commercialized and you know, the attractions are there, everything is tailored and manicured and, and pretty. But when you go along the coast, you're continuing east and you go into Port Antonio, which is I would think the jewel of Jamaica, but it is not widely known. And typically, it's the Europeans who tend to go to Port Antonio. That is where, if you remember, um, his name just slipped me. Oh, my goodness. The movie Cocktail was filmed there with Tom Cruise. Okay. And there was this shot in the Blue Lagoon where there was this endless sea of blue and the water has no bottom that is one of the most visited locations because of that movie Hmm. and so you can go there do boat rides and and all of that very private very secluded there are some fantastic small properties in that area you won't find any all-inclusives in portland what you will find though is a very close to nature rainforest sort of a situation so it is just absolutely mind-boggling with beauty to 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 do your holiday there so if you're really looking off the beaten track connecting with the locals eating roadside food but with a restaurant style quality then portland you know will be the pull factor if you head over to Kingston, of course, that's cosmopolitan, like any other city. <laughs> so, you know, you will find the Marriott's and, and, and more of those kind of hotels. Um, we have a few local brands, but the, 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 the layout is still very formal, not so much touristy. And so for persons who are in K- 
things done for business or they just want a different type of fun, that's what they're going to experience. But within short distance from your hotels in New Kingston, for example, you've got the Helsha Beach, which is another big signature location for fresh fish. And you'll notice I keep talking about fish and lobster. Yes, and <laughs> you're making a, me hungry. I know, right? <laughs> it's a huge part of our culture. We, 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 I don't think we deliberately do it, but we consume a lot of fish and we love our fish. We love our seafood. Mm. You know, so for the men, for example, you'll hear about sea cat. And, and um, if I had a Jamaican man in the room here, he would tell you that if you have a good sea cat, it will lift you and keep you standing. I not <laughs> go any further with that. <laughs> so the men tend to like the sea cat. Sea cat. Um, but, yeah, I know you're putting a little <laughs> note, right? <laughs> yeah, I'm writing notes right now. <laughs> And Portmore, and Portmore is the third city in Jamaica, which is interesting because it's the largest residential community in the English-speaking Caribbean. So in itself, it is a place to be. And then, I mean, I could go on. I'm a history buff. I'm a geography buff. But you guys need to come to Jamaica. Let us local trip in you for Portland in particular and Kingston. And, of course, you continue down the south coast to St. Elizabeth, where you'll find Wyas Falls and the Black River Safari. And that's a totally different game. Absolutely country oh, and man. it's rivers it is um shrimp that they catch right there and prepare with scotch bonnet pepper that make your eyes run water and your nose start to go but it's just so wonderful at the same time and as you go around the coast you will get to where we call scott's cove for amazing street food street food in jamaica is something that everybody should have Hmm. And that is one of the reasons. And I don't want to sound like I'm pushing this um, local trip in, but I'm still so excited <laughs> because go, go I'm right so ahead. wanting. Yeah, I want to get people to <laughs> see my country in a real, real way. Yeah. Yes. So we we stop on the road and we get street food, and you taste some essences that just literally pop in your mouth. It, it's beautiful. I mean, there's no other way to put it. Wow. So as we as we go around the bend and I'm literally taking you on a on a on a journey around the island, yeah? Mm-hmm. You get down to Saint Elizabeth, what we call Saint Bess, and that's the breadbasket of Jamaica. That's where all the farming and the produce comes from, you know. So that is a totally different experience. Why it falls is just absolutely divine, but it's also a working plantation. So we get into all the history of that. And then as you come around, if you um, decide not to go Ferris, but you continue along to Savannah Lamar, which is a very flat area, almost kissing the sea, you're going to end up in Negril. Hmm. And of course, Negril is the most western point of the island. Seven Mile Beach, personally, because I live here, it is not the most beautiful beach in Jamaica, but it is the most advertised, most beautiful beach in Jamaica. Really? I know. <laughs> I could take you to a beach that would make you weep. Real? Oh, my God. Okay. I'm going to hold you to that. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to... Oh. Yeah, so... Um, but the girl has its fame. I lived in the girl as a... As a young girl, I worked as an entertainment coordinator, and um, it had a very slow, lazy, laid-back feel that was back in the, the early 1990s. And I remember that there was not a building over three stories high back in the day, you know? Mm-hmm. And so Life in the Grill was just, it was really slow. It was like the capital of casual in a serious way. And um, I've watched it evolve, but there are persons who are so very loyal to Jamaica and loyal to Negril that that's where they go. That's their place. Wow. You know, for me personally, yeah, it's it's okay. But I mean, having lived there, that probably put a little taint on on my 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 um, thought of it. 
and then too, because I've seen so much more and I know so much more, I would probably split my clients stay between the grill and another area if they had enough time. If they were doing a seven day and they didn't mind moving, mm -hmm. I'd probably do maybe a three or a four night in the grill and then take them to another local just so that they get a, a, an ample feel mm -hmm. of what that is like. And so now we have the, the giants, you know, the larger properties have come in. Rio was one of the first ones to come and put skyscrapers, quote unquote, I mean, five stories, like that's a skyscraper for Negril. Mm -hmm. And so there are larger properties there now. And the culture is still laid back, but a little bit more cosmopolitan, you know what I mean? Yes. But as you continue along that beach, there's a whole stretch that is just absolutely still pretty much virgin. And so that's where you will get your catamaran um, rides that will probably dock and do just like a beach launch. Very, very nice. Just lots happening there, but you kind of have to know where they are and how to ask for those things. You know what I mean? Yes, yes. This is this is great stuff. Um, we are talking about Jamaica with Sharon Sheriff White host of the Sweet Life Travel Podcast and owner of Sherry's Fantastic Travels and Resorts Limited, based out of Ultra Rios, Jamaica. So, um, with our current situation uh, that's going on in the world right now and our current pandemic, um, how are things in Jamaica? And I know, I know as, I'm, I'll, I'll say this for, I know you probably have a lot to say, so, <laughs> so I'm going to say this real quick. Um, one, how are things in Jamaica? And I know lately as an agent, I've been getting a lot of information about things starting to reopen, um, things getting, getting ready to, to welcome back guests. But I definitely wanted to talk to someone who, who's in the know. As to as to what's going on down there, and um, when is it truly a good time to go back? You know, one of the first things that I'll tell you about Jamaica is the naturalness is coming back, and I I've seen it happening all across the world. In Italy, they're talking about a lot of the natural beauty. The earth got a little chance to rest, mm -hmm. and we're seeing that too. Um, the beaches have been closed for a while, and so I'm going through tremendous withdrawal syndrome. I mean, oh, I need the beach. <laughs> I need water. <laughs> and um, it's, 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 I tell you this, you know, a lot has been happening from the standpoint of some properties are taking the chance to to freshen up, you know, mm -hmm. because why waste a good closure? Yes. You know, so some of them are freshening up. Um, there's this one that I have not gotten to see yet, which is Ocean Coral Spring in Trelawney, a brand new, beautiful edifice. It is a game changer type property. Mm. And they were not, even though they had a soft opening, they were not quite open mm -hmm. fully. And so I hear that they have been full throttle going forward. And once we're, we're open and good to go, they're going to be a marvelous property. But a lot of us, tourism people, tourism workers, we've kind of just been chilling. A lot of times you find that being so busy in this industry, we don't have time to, to connect with friends and family and even with the, with the kids, you know. Mm. So it's been a lot of home time. A lot of us have started to cook and bake. <laughs> <laughs> and we are developing some new skills. So it's been it's been very homely. From from the government standpoint, we understand that May thirty first is when the the country will officially get back to work. Um I assume that there's going to be a scaled re-entering of the workforce because a lot of people have been working from home, which is a new norm. Mm. Um, I remember when I started my agency over 10 years ago and I was a home-based agent, person was like, what? What's that? Because I was so foreign here. And um, someone would call and I'd say, oh, I'm on a, on a webinar or so, and people would give me that funny look. <laughs> now it's the norm. So everybody's pretty much at home, but itching to go out, itching to go eat some street food, yes. for example. Um, but yeah, 
Now, when tourists will be allowed to come back, there are variations of the official date. Some resorts have put dates out there. No Sandals has already set their date up. But of course, it has a lot to do with the airlift. And um, that's something that I think will be phased. So we'll just have to keep our ears glued to what um, the tourist board, Jamaica tourist board will be saying. And of course, the conditions worldwide too, the methods that they're going to be using for persons to enter. There's been this talk, for example, about a travel passport that will indicate your health status. So it's going to be a new normal. The health yeah. procedures have been beefed up. A lot of resorts, I know Sandals, they have sent out a document outlining their sanitation upgrades and, and the protocol behind that. You know, simple things like their staff will no longer be able to wear their uniforms on the road because they will not be, they don't want them to be contaminated. They want to have as sterile an environment as possible on okay. resort. Okay. So, you know, Jamaica, Jamaica is very serious about our tourism product. Yeah. And um, a lot of persons, they get very surprised when they get here because the attention to detail that you will get, it's, it, it kind of blows your mind. But that is truly Jamaican. We, we, we're we all in and, and we're meticulous and we guard our product very, very aggressively. And so having been here before, you'll notice a lot of new norms when you get back. And so it's, it's still a work in progress. But we hear the resorts talking. We're seeing them kind of testing their feet a little bit with the specials and the deals and the cancellation opportunities in the event that those dates go shot. And so I'm going to take the plug, if you don't mind, to encourage your listeners to book now with confidence. Yes. Because some good deals are going to be floating around, and you don't want to miss it, you know? No, not at, not at all. Before I let you go, I do have to ask you, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to see if you can limit it to five. What oh. are some must-see things when you come to Jamaica? Five. Oh, dear goodness. That's, why, that's why I gave you a number. <laughs> <laughs> I just had to get that in there. <laughs> All right, now for the proper five. That was a commercial. <laughs> hmm. <sighs> There's, I'm not going to talk about the ones that everybody talks about. Okay. Because... Yeah, everybody talks about them. So my big deal, even if it's a day trip, go to Port Antonio. Okay. Yes, for sure. Spend the entire day. Um, you might need to book a resort in Ocho Rios because the travel time would probably be about two and a half hours. Anywhere else, it might be a bit far. But two and a half hours, two and two and a half hours back. Outside of that, it might be a little much, but the road network is awesome. My next thought would be go to the south coast, go to Black River. So it's like polar opposites, but so worth it. Okay. You know, so Black River, Wyas Falls, see that sort of Jamaica. Go to Appleton Estates. And, and I know you said five, but literally that's one. <laughs> right. Because that's one trip. Okay, right? I, I'll give you that one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then. If you, if you ever can come in, as a matter of fact, go to Port Royal. If you're in the Otrius area again, the highway is great and Owen Plus, and you're in Port Royal, that history and all that that has to offer is just magnificent. So that would be my number three. My number four would be do a night tour, do the Luminous Lagoon when it's pitch dark out. And hmm. see all of those. Um, uh, they they're, they're these uh, illuminated water creatures that they just light up the entire night. Hmm. It's it's something to see and to remember. And my number five, hmm, what would be my number five would be do a country adventure. You know, some somewhere that would take you hiking. And there's so many, like St. Mary, 
St. Mary is very close to Ocherius, but there's so many country type adventures that you can do right there. So those would be my top five picks. Okay, okay, I got something to do. I've, I think I've done maybe two out of the five, so I need to do three more. Okay, no problem. Oh, yeah, all right, awesome. yeah, all right. So I'm gonna give you this opportunity to to do all your plugs. Um, if if folks wanted to listen to your podcast, if they wanted to contact you for. Uh, any excursions outside of contacting me because I know how to reach you, but if anybody else wanted to mm-hmm. or even reach out to you on social media, please go go ahead and give them all your information. Awesome. So we are the Sweet Life Travel Podcast on Anchor FM. So anchor.fm, you will find us there. And the frequency, I have no idea. I'd like to be frequent, but not <laughs> as frequent as yet. But we're there. You know, we, and we talk about all kinds of things, travel. I'm on Facebook, so you can look us up. We're Share Fantastic Travels and Resorts Limited, and we're all about the fun. We are on YouTube, and there is a wide array of videos that will just make your mouth water, Mm. literally. And um, you need to come and and visit us and, and subscribe subscribe to our channel it it helps the analytics i can tell you that and um we 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 try to just be be social so wherever you put in sheriff fantastic travels or you type in sharon sheriff white we pop up you know you'll see me popping up there and always rest assured that we support the travel agent community and so if you reach out to me directly don't feel bad because everything that you do with us is channeled directly back to johnny so we're 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 good for the goal (laughs) well sharon thank you so much it has been such a pleasure talking to you such a pleasure hearing more about jamaica and just hearing your you, you know i i remember telling you that your positive energy is so attractive and how I know people listening to this are going to be excited to to come visit Jamaica even more than they were before listening to you. Um, and it's, it has truly been a pleasure. So thank you so much. It's been such a pleasure. I remember when you and I met um, in Miami, there was a poll. And, and they say, nice people attract nice people. Yes. So... It was wonderful meeting you, and I'm so happy that we have kept the link alive. Yes, and definitely. I look forward to seeing you in Jamaica because I'm gonna take you local tripping. <laughs> I I cannot wait. I cannot wait. So thank you so much, and I appreciate you. Absolutely, thank you for having me, Johnny. It has been an absolute pleasure. Would not have missed this for the world. Don't treat